Hello there, my fellow intellectuals. Welcome back to part B of this quantum mechanics problem. The problem asks, what is the probability that a measurement of the energy would yield pi squared h bar squared over 2 ma squared? Now, the energy levels in the infinite square well are given by n squared pi squared uh, times h bar squared over 2 ma squared. So n corresponds to the energy level. If you look at this term right here, there is a 1 squared. So this is equivalent of asking what is the probability of finding the particle in the n equals 1 state. Now remember that the initial wave function was given by, uh, uh, in the previous part, root 2 over a between 0 and a over 2, and 0 between a over 2 and a. So one way to sort of think about this is that think of the initial wave function as a superposition of states. Right, of states in the infinite square well, psi n of x, and we know that the wave functions in the infinite square well are given by the following formula. Now, uh, we also know that the coefficients, right, if you take the square of the, co of the coefficients, or the modulus, this equals the probability of being state n. So we have to essentially calculate what is, what is C1? How do we get C1 out of here? Now to get C1, because we want to figure out what's the probability, probability of being in the n equals 1 state, essentially what we do is that we take uh, this inner product, psi 1 of x, and we operate that on, not operate, but we take it with psi x of 0. So we take this inner product. And what's going to happen is that if we just substitute the definition of psi x of 0 above as a superposition of states, what's going to happen is that we're going to have psi 1 of x on uh, essentially sum cn psi n of x. And we know that these wave functions are orthogonal. So we know that psi n on psi m is equal to delta m n, right? So we know that, um, that this should be zero if this doesn't uh, work out, right? So if this, if n of them are zero, this is just going to be Kronecker delta, so it's not going to give us anything. It's not gonna be really meaningful unless we pick out the n equals m case. And so essentially what we're going to do here is that when we operate on this, uh, what comes out is just going to be C1, right? Because every other state is going to be, every other state that's not n equals one is just gonna give us a zero. So we'll be able to um, extract the C1 coefficient. So to do that in integral form, what we're going to do is that this is also equal to integral uh, psi 1. So we'll, technically, we'll have psi 1 complex conjugate, but this is a real function. There's no complex numbers there. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to have psi 1. So psi 1 would just be root 2 over a sine. So n equals 1, 1 pi x over a. Now we'll have psi x of 0 which is just root 2 over a, and that uh, we have a dx there. Now we have to integrate this over all space where this is defined, but since psi x of 0 is only defined between 0 and a over 2, we're just going to have 0 a over 2 right there. Okay, so uh, we just have to perform this integral here. So we'll have uh, the, two, the two root 2's over a going to come outside like that. So we'll have 0 a over 2 sine pi x over a dx. And we know that the integral of a sine is uh, going to be a negative cosine. So we'll have 2 over a. Now we'll have, we have to make sure we uh, make sure we take care of the factors. So we'll have 2 over a times a over pi, then we'll have 
negative cosine of pi x a, and we evaluate that between a over 2 and 0. Okay, I'm running, about, I'm running out of space here, so I might have to erase things soon. Um, but I think we can do it. So these, this a and this a are going to cancel. We'll just have 2 over pi. And then we'll have a negative cosine, uh, negative cosine of pi over a times x is a over 2. So you have negative cosine of pi over 2. This is actually 0 because cosine of pi over 2 is just 0. So we have a minus, minus cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is just 1. Minus sine is a minus 1. Another minus 1, sorry, another minus sine is a plus 1. So this entire thing is just 2 over pi times 1, which is just equal to 2 over pi. Remember, that's c1. That's the coefficient associated with the n equals 1 uh, wave function. And so we know that c1 you know, absolute value squared, that is going to be 2 over pi squared. And this is the probability, right? This is the probability of finding the particle in state n equals 1. So this is the answer we're looking for. And if you want to be more precise, I believe this answer is approximately 0 0.4. 0 0.4, yeah, just about. So about a 40% chance of finding it in the n equals 1 state. So I hope this video was helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed this quantum mechanics problem. And I'm planning to make more in the future. Hopefully, you'll find them enjoyable and helpful. So thanks for watching.